Hello, welcome to the Cube coverage here in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube with the Cube Research Analyst Christoph Bertrand, who's with me here in San Francisco. Dreamforce is happening; it's getting going. We are getting it off the ground here on the Cube. We've got great wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Again, this event is turning into quite the ecosystem event, Gen AI event. Salesforce has, has always been hampered by the reputation of having multiple disparate systems through acquisitions, multiple platforms, not working well together. So this Dreamforce could be Salesforce living the dream, bringing it all together and building those abstraction layers and kind of making Gen AI be the glue layer, so to speak, to bring it all together, to abstract away all the complexity, reduce the steps it takes to get things done. We're going to wait to see all the announcements in the keynote. Christoph, great to see you, and uh, thanks for coming in with the team today. Full team coverage here in San Francisco. Yeah, nice to be here, absolutely. The you know the big genesis, you heard my little uh, monologue intro, is, is that Salesforce has been hampered with the reputation, and they got such a great business, and, and obviously continues to thunder along in performance. But now this is a, a dream scenario for them, pun intended, at Dreamforce, with agentic systems hitting the scene, and pulling all that to data together, because Salesforce, although has disparate systems, has tons of data. Um, they got they got them use the data. They got to get agents out there. They got to protect the data. So it is a perfect scenario for them to be the poster child of how Gen AI could transform an existing giant into a mega giant. Absolutely, and you'll see this in our coverage. Uh, we had a great uh, conversation with uh, a customer this morning, uh, a smaller uh, size company, but they were able, uh, in a matter of, of weeks uh, or months, to actually leverage uh, the uh, capabilities of AI and Gen AI in Salesforce uh, on their own uh, without having to uh, go to a complex type of process with uh, uh, an external integrator. So I think there is definitely a lot going on. There are lots of obviously announcements around uh, uh, agent force, and that's going to be absolutely key. Had the ability to also talk to one of their uh, partners in the ecosystem. Uh, it is going to be about AI, for sure. <laughs> we know that, you know, Mark Benioff has always has his finger on the pulse, and, and he's literally on, I, I've been watching his career from for over a decade and a half now, up close. He is on every wave, and he implements it. Sometimes they, they become a little bit hype, but okay, Either way, he's got a good nose for the waves. Agentic, I think he's got a good call here, you know, thinking agentic force and bringing agents, because I think that will help them. Um, your research has been, um, over the years, deep in, in data, um, protecting data. Ransomware has been a big attack. As Salesforce puts this system together, one of the things they have to be careful of, as, as all their customers is, you now have systems connecting through APIs, ecosystem partners, all these alliances. There's a lot of connective tissue that's underway of kind of being reset or repurposed or refactored. Um, how do you see that? Because this is still, the game is still the same. You've got data protection, cyber resilience, securing that data is huge, and also using that data and replicating it. These are storage paradigms moving to Gen AI. Absolutely, and uh, the one of the things uh, that's key here is to remember that there is a bulk API, and that bulk API actually uh, has been uh, an interesting way of protecting data within Salesforce. Now, not everybody is necessarily doing it the same way, uh, and I would say this is a perfect question because of the recent announcement of the acquisition of Own Backup, or Own, uh, they used to be called Own Backup, but now Own, uh, by Salesforce, which actually begs a few questions. Uh, number one is they have um, tried a couple of times uh, to actually get into that data protection space, backup and recovery space, yet uh, that didn't quite work. Uh, they have, of course, uh, sort of, in a sense, pushed the problem back to customers by having an ecosystem of players like Odeseva, Veeam, others, uh, Haiku, et cetera, uh, play uh, as the uh, solution. Yet, now, what is the message? So I think I'm, I'm going to be looking for uh, indications in terms of what's next uh, for this uh, acquisition. Uh, obviously, it's a bit early to say. Uh, it has to close. But what it says is this, to your point. Data is very critical. And when you spend a couple of billion on protecting data, it's because you really, really care about it. Now, Gen AI is only going to accelerate that requirement. Why? Uh, because you mentioned it. It's about uh, the uh, essence of the business. It's about automating workflows. It's about leveraging all of that data that maybe you're actually not using today. So guess what? A lot of people are probably underplaying their hands with their data right now. And uh, I think the promise here of uh, Gen AI is, and AI in general, within Salesforce, protected correctly is that it will bring a lot of automations and a lot of great things to the table. You know, I had interviewed um, last year uh, Alice uh, Steinglass. She's the EVP. 
She talked about responsible use of generative AI over a year ago, and that's a big focus here at Salesforce's Dreamforce this year. Guardrails and data governance is a huge discussion because you know, it's one of those things where it's not a sexy mainstream conversation, but when you think about agentic systems and agents and sub-agents, I could see George and MK, who runs Next Gen Platform for Salesforce, about to come on the cube next. You know, his whole job is to make this platform horizontally scalable, yet domain specific with the data. So you, to let that data fly, you need to have really new kinds of governance, new cataloging, and, and those guardrails, because you have now multiple dimensions. You got uh, sovereign cloud, you got geography, you got regions. So this is a complicated thing. And, and what Alice uh, at Salesforce talked about is, you have to have trust in the AI. How do you see that evolving? Because as you look at the data from the bottoms up, application developers just want to be abstracted away from the complexity. So all that data has to move on its own and be intelligent. Remember, drift and hallucinations is the big problem. They got to be smarter. What's your take on that? Well, let me go back to the basics here. First of all, there is no AI or leveraging of data if the data itself is not compliant. <laughs> and you have to know, and in order to do that, you have to know what data you have and where it is across the board because there are a num number of integrations, APIs from other sources into Salesforce and out of Salesforce. So let's start with that. And I would say once we get that done, which is a big, big um, ask really to start, then I think you can get into the next step, which is, okay, now how do I really use this to augment uh, what I know about my environment? I think there's a lot to do around um, augmentation for sure. Uh, and, and you're right, I think the, the other question is, how do you then not trust so much the AI, but trust the data? Let's start with that. For me, it's about data trust. Uh, starting with very proper data management, uh, responsible data management, compliant data management. Uh, that's going to be the price to pay before you can get into any fancy AI, in my opinion. Yo, Christoph, this highlights your point uh, you just brought up. Um, I want to bring this to the table is um, with this new Gen AI wave, it's a new category we're seeing that. I'll see you seeing NVIDIA and the hardware's hot. I'll see a category changeover. Um, when you think about things that are important, operational efficiency becomes huge. So when you look at uh, Salesforce and as they're evolving, one of the things that's really accelerating for this company is the fact that they're now having a lot more innovation in the ecosystem. You're starting to see them partner with AWS, the cloud providers. And again, you mentioned data's coming in and out of Salesforce. So we're talking about third party, probably through APIs and other connectors. But this creates this idea that I got to create operational efficiency. So one, I want to get your thoughts on that. And then two, there's two schools of thought right now around this. You're seeing a trend where, oh, we're going to get rid of Salesforce and CRM systems and build our own. So you got this kind of build your own mentality from a cost structure standpoint, but yet you have this incumbent data position with Salesforce where if you get that operational platform right, the benefits are huge. So this is causing a huge um, surge of innovation inside the ecosystem. Normally ecosystem, ISVs, they build on top of platforms, but when you bring the notion up of talking to each other in real time at application speed for Gen AI, that's a game changer in the sense of architecture. So what's your thoughts on one, the ecosystem innovation equation um, with Salesforce in the marketplace, and two, operational efficiency uh, versus this buy, build my own versus levers existing? Well, I think the build my own versus leveraging what's <laughs> what's already there is a pretty easy question to answer. So, uh, I'm not okay, even, answer I'm, it then. I'm not even going <laughs> to go there. It's super simple. I think the the question is wh how you first of all are you, uh, what is your experience uh, on Salesforce? What are you doing? We had a great uh, example uh, earlier today when we spoke with a, a client of Salesforce that really started by just dealing with leads and then got into you know the whole ERP platform and uh, operating the business on Salesforce uh, and of course now getting into uh, Gen AI and uh, augmented type of use cases. And what I took away from it was the efficiency that was built in was, was tremendous. Uh, they were able to change their ability to manage their inventory. I mean, go straight to the bottom, bottom line and customer experience. So the customers are happier uh, because of their ability to inform them with uh, emails of uh, their status of their order and more. There's a lot more we discussed. Uh, definitely a, a segment you should uh, take a look at. Uh, I will say that's the first point of operational efficiency as long as, of course, you know what you're doing and you work uh, you know, within the parameters of your business, understanding your workflows and translating them into the existing tools, you don't necessarily need a lot of customization within Salesforce to get a, a great job done. Now, it's not always the case. The larger <laughs> the organization, the yeah, more yeah. complex you can get. Number two, um, I think you, you, you get go back to the, the point we made earlier around data. 
it's really about data. Uh, you, you have to have the goods in order to really reap the benefits uh, for mm -hmm. uh, of the platform. Uh, another great example we heard was uh, what can be done with agentic AI and some announcements around agent force, uh, especially around the professional services uh, world, and uh, definitely had a great conversation on this topic as well. I think it's going to get better, but for some, it may get a little worse before it gets better. For the folks watching, check out Christoph's research. He's doing some great work in this area. Again, super important. Uh, it's in it's in in the. the and the key areas that are where the innovation is. Okay, on the question of the innovation ecosystem, what's your thoughts? You've seen ecosystems over decades, multiple waves of innovation. Um, what's your take on this one? Is it uh, maybe over optimistic or over uh, excited by this change? What's your take on this ecosystem? It's a completely different dynamic, power dynamic than we've seen before. Well, I mean, is it an ecosystem or ecosystems, <laughs> because <laughs> Plural, I would say both. Yeah, yeah, it's it's both, and really that's uh, it depends on on, on the topic. Uh, you have such a wide variety uh, of players and partners, uh, not just in what they do as a business, but also in terms of themes around data, around Salesforce. Uh, I mentioned earlier data protection. That's uh, one ecosystem, and uh, it goes on and on, right? So yeah. I think uh, it's a very very healthy very uh, wide ecosystem. Uh, the promise of AI is to simplify, I think, the integration of the the functioning uh, of the various moving parts. And I think that's really what it comes down to, automation, simplification, giving, uh, at the end of the day, the customer more uh, independence mm -hmm. and autonomy. This being said, I think the architectural question that comes into play is how much you want to rely on APIs versus running native to an extent, which is a conversation we also had earlier. So I think this is one of the one of the topics that will probably yeah. in time become more critical because you know the more APIs, the more complexity potentially, yeah. although AP, uh, you know AI could help abstract that complexity. I think the ecosystem's plural is the right answer and I think that you're right on the money. I think this is a, a great time. The Cube will be covering this innovation in the ecosystem. So you'll see a lot more content come from us around partners, alliances, how they all work together from a deep tech perspective. Uh, Christoph, I wrote a post this morning um, around uh, this event and kind of setting the table with some content that we had before. It also kind of like a teaser of what to expect. Um, the title was Salesforce, Living the Dream Force, <laughs> um, Revolutionizing Business Workflows and Data Governance. Um, by the way, if you like the Cube and you like the free research at thecuberesearch.com, um, go check us out and engage with the content. You know, it's free. We do this service to provide benefits to the community. If you're interested in being a creator and, and collaborating with us, join the Cube Collective. Go to that site. Check it out. Uh, we do this uh, for you, the audience, so that, and, and we love doing it. So thanks, thanks for... Uh, for engaging with us, appreciate you. Christoph, so my notes here were basically like, the landscape is changing, they're adding to their portfolio, customization, personalization, big paragraph on that, with some great videos um, from Alice Steinglass and others, enhancing the sales cloud. Remember the data cloud is a huge part of it. Amber Armstrong inspired me on LinkedIn to look at that more closely. And if you look at the service cloud and some of the low code, no code they got going on, you're starting to see the construction of a real scalable platform. The service cloud's got some innovations. Data integration with generative AI, to your point, you just mentioned that. It's a huge discussion. The data cloud's going to allow that. Again, MK's out there talking to George about the, the next gen platform. Again, flow building, um, operational efficiency in the financial sector, guardrails and data governance. Um, they're working to create an entire expanded application portfolio is what, what I focused on. And why I did that, and this is where I want to get your reaction to, is that Salesforce has an opportunity to change the game, notwithstanding their own transformation around licensing, how they do their business model, but from a technical perspective, from a customer perspective, they get the keys to the kingdom. Okay, they don't have to rule the world in, in cloud and distributed computing. They can just be a key center. And we saw Oracle with Larry Ellison last week uh, really talking about how he's embracing multiple cloud or super cloud. You start to see the, the beginning of an operating system in a distributed way. Salesforce could be a major system of record for these companies rather than this siloed, you know, stovepipe, as Dave Vellante would say, customer platform that's just hard to work with. So, you know, in any wave, if you can reduce the steps it takes to do something, make it simple and easy to use, and with Gen AI with this, this glue layer, I mean, Salesforce has a huge opportunity with their platform to do this. I mean, so this could be them living the dream, or they might have to call it nightmare force. <laughs> I mean, they're in a scenario where they can, they're going to win big, or maybe have a huge setback. Again, this is a key moment in time for Salesforce. Your reaction? Uh, 
it's about the data. It's and data is the business. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the, <laughs> the net net. I like to I like to always take a step back and bring it back to the reality. And you're right. I think if they can deliver on not just Gen AI, I think AI in general as this uh, capability within the platform to let the ecosystem fully participate uh, and in the end create more independence, autonomy and operational efficiency to your earlier point for the end user. I mean, that's the name of the game. But not just that, there are a number of enablers along the way, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ISVs, uh, professional services organizations that actually need a bunch of tools. So the tooling is maybe yeah. what we need to talk about yeah. in time to get to that nirvana of being sort of the one source of, of truth mm -hmm. uh, and being the platform that holds that. And you're right, after that, is it multi-cloud? Is yeah. it on? And, and, and I would say in some cases, I could make an argument, maybe some things should at some point come back, yeah. not on-prem, but in a very controlled, uh, sort of governed uh, type of environment for compliance yeah. reasons. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting, I think I didn't have enough information to post in, in my uh, post today, I didn't have enough research formed yet, but it's the impact of the developer community and the impact of communities in general. Salesforce has been exceptional with communities. You got the Trailblazer community. Um, they've been decades of experience in nurturing um, their customer base, so they have a huge engaged community. On the dev side, the low code, no code gives them opportunity, but what I want to get your thoughts on, and this is something that we're watching, if anyone has an opinion, please DM me. I'm doing us big stories on this. They got Heroku, which is the OG of the cloud. If you look at Heroku as cloud native platform, you got um, all this other connective tissue like MuleSoft, Okay, they've been here on the cube. They're coming through the system here. So MuleSoft, Heroku, Salesforce, Data Cloud. I mean, they got all the puzzle pieces. Can they get those devs? So I think the Heroku piece is going to be something that's going to be interesting because the cloud native developer world of KubeCon, CNCF, that market's tooling up to be the foundational piece of it because all this right. will run on cloud native. Right. The infrastructure's coming in, we're expecting Jensen on stage with Benioff, of course, is gonna be a big, got more GPUs, we got more, all the stuff powering Gen AI, but the critical work is gonna be at the cloud native foundation and then this data layer. So devs, community, areas that could go either way for Salesforce. We are reaction to that. Well, it feels like history all over <laughs> again. We've seen that show before. <laughs> We've seen that story. You were mentioning Oracle. I can think of Oracle a few years ago. Uh, and it was exactly the same story. You would have asked exactly the same question and see what happened. It really yeah. worked out. Uh, so I think it, it has been the case since mainframe. So I don't see a big, the, the big difference though is this. One thing you haven't mentioned is scale. Yeah. Everything you've said has been true through the cycles of technology we've seen, but scale has been the one thing that changes. So I think, to me, the, the real test will be scale. And can you actually scale the data so that you can actually use it and reuse it? Uh, the tooling we, we, we talked about, but so yeah, I think they have the component, you're right. Is it a bit of a puzzle right now? Yeah. Certainly is, but. I mean, if they're monolithic though, this is going to be the challenge because Salesforce right. is going to have no problem running on Salesforce. By the way, speaking of uh, Oracle, I when the Cube started 15 years ago, I was here when Mark Benioff protested his keynote and had a keynote here at the St. Regis. And Mark, if you remember, if you're watching, I covered that and live streamed it on Justin TV, pre-Twitch uh, in the front row. It was a really kind of epic moment. They were, it was a really big deal. But now, but now Salesforce has its own infrastructure, but it's this ecosystem. The cloud native right. is a distributed paradigm, distributed computing paradigm. So I think you're going to start to see Salesforce have to get into new swim lane with cloud native, and again, the, the low code, no code is, is key. And again, applications will be determine what's real. Not applications, use cases. Use cases, exactly. Businesses think in terms of data and use cases. At the end of the day, it's about the money, it's about the data, and data is the money, data is the business. Christoph, what are you working on now? What's your big focus? Uh, where, what's getting you excited? What's uh, but what's that fire in your stomach? What's what's going on? Well, I love data. I love data protection. I love ransomware. Uh, not love ransomware. I love to talk about it. <laughs> it's <laughs> a terrible thing. But <laughs> How to we, prevent it? <laughs> but we need we need to build more, build more cyber resilience. And by the way, that's a topic that uh, also applies across the Salesforce environment. Uh, again, probably more focused on data protection, backup, recovery. But those are very very high, you yeah. know, very important topic topics. The other thing is, I'd like to know more about high availability. Should a disaster strike, what's the solution? How do you sort of become become highly available beyond what the protections yeah. and, and the services Salesforce yeah. provide. And these are questions that are hard to answer. <laughs> you, so these are the areas. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite, these, my two favorite words is high availability and highly available. There's a difference. Oh, very Gen AI, very latency is everything, command and control at the edge, 
big topics. Again, so, you know, sovereign cloud, cyber resilience, this crosses over with security and also governance for you. Absolutely. And compliance. I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest driver is going to be uh, that stick and carrot. And <laughs> compliance is just that for you. If the apps don't have the data and com it's not compliance and govern, it's not going to work. Yeah. All right, I'm John Furrier. We're here in San Francisco for exclusive coverage of Salesforce's Dreamforce. Here we got Salesforce living the dream here in San Francisco, bringing Gen AI and Agentic Systems. As this next application tsunami comes in, it's Cambrian explosion, we're gonna see all kinds of new invention, new innovations in the ecosystem and within developers. So stay tuned for more wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thanks for watching.